Welcome to GTI Predictive Technology. We're here today uh, to go over and do a tutorial on our Balance Pro app. Uh, we have two applications for our, our balancing on the iPad. Uh, as you know, iPad has vibration analysis, thermography, ultrasound, uh, laser shaft alignment, and many others. Uh, we're starting uh, the tutorials out on the balancing uh, so that you can uh, follow through and, and work with this and see how easy it really is to, to balance something. We have two balancing apps. The one I'm showing you today is called Balance Pro. The other is iRotor Balancer. Balance Pro is designed specifically for motor repair shops and pump repair shops, spindle repair shops, anybody that's doing uh, balancing in a repair type shop mode. That's why it's called Balance Pro Shop. Um, behind me here, you'll see uh, typically this is used for accommodating old balancers with stanchions and improving and upgrading their electronics. But it also has a function for balancing spindles, motors, uh, pumps, anything that rotates uh, that's been repaired. As long as it's set up on a rubber stanchion uh, we, in, in a test run environment, we can balance. And that's what I'm going to show you today. The one that runs on the stanchions uh, runs exactly the same through the same methods and methodology. So as I go through, I'm going to project the screen behind me so that you can see every prompt and touch that I make on the iPad as I go through. Quickly for the setup though first, we have an accelerometer in the horizontal position. We also have a tachometer in the horizontal position. Both of those need to be pointing in the same position, both on your balancer stanchions as well as on anything you're balancing. I can simply uh, go to vertical mode, I just have to point the tachometer, which is the second channel at the same orientation as my accelerometer. Now if I move my accelerometer to the second plane, the, the tachometer can remain where it is. It doesn't have to follow to the second plane, just as long as it's in the same orientation for phase angle. Today though, we're only going to do one plane. The two plane works in the identical way as the single plane. I am just doing one plane to shorten this video and be able to simply describe uh, how the uh, hierarchy goes and how you drill down on each uh, point in the application. So I'm going to start the recording behind me now. Uh, you can see that my main screen comes up and Balance Pro app is right there and you'll see me touch it and I will open it. And immediately in Balance Pro, you'll see you've got four choices. Uh, we can do a one plane measurement and uh, balance one plane at a time, which is what we're going to demonstrate today. Or next to it, you'll see two planes where we can see two planes at the same time. There's an AB switch on our DAQ right on the back of the iPad. You can switch from plane to plane and make corrections from one side to the other. But again, we're going to be doing just one plane. So I will open the imbalance correction one plane mode now. You'll see where I touched it. I'm going to turn the motor on. And you see there's a spectrum here as well as uh, to the left of the dot, as well as uh, a polar plot beneath it here. So what you're first going to see me do is I'm going to pinch this spectrum out so I get that running speed right in the middle. So I know this is my one times because it's my tachometer is showing me 2138 RPM to the right and just below it you'll see my amplitude at 0.2621 at 271 degrees which is showing me my heavy spot. Now you do you can see that uh, duplicated below in the polar plot here where the white dot is. It's showing me my heavy spot right where that 271 is or 270 degrees. Um, so you can see this hierarchy. We've got original vibration, correction weight, uh, vibration with weight. We start from the top and just work our way down. That's how simple it is. So let's do that. We're going to tap on our original vibration, that little arrow. And what that did is just input the data that it's reading right into that spot so it can start making its calculations. And you see beneath it, it already has told me that it wants me to put my correction weight at 91 degrees, but not yet does it know what my correction weight weighs. It's telling me a suggestion, which if I hit this plus, it will bring up my rotor weight, which I'll guess that's about a pound, and I can put that in there and it will tell me my weight radius, which is about two inches. 
so we'll tap that in and put two inches in there and we know our balancing speed is 2138 so we'll put that in there and I'll hit done and you can see it's, it's telling me a recommended trial weight of 0 0.01 ounces now, I might not have 0 0.01 ounces so we have a little scale here I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna weigh the screw that I have and find out exactly how much it weighs because I want to be very accurate here so let me place that on the scale and we don't have we have actually 0 0.032 ounces so I am going to open that up and I'm gonna actually put 0 0.032 right in that box as you can see I typed it in and we're gonna hit done because that's the exact weight I am gonna put at the recommended, the app told me it wants me to put that at 90 degrees. So let's do that. We're going to simply turn the motor off. I'm going to get, as you can see on here, I've already pre labeled my tape is zero. Uh, I put a zero there, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. So I know where 90 degrees is, it's right where I wrote it. So let's thread that screw right in at 90 degrees. We'll thread it nice and deep so that we know it won't come out and we'll turn the motor back on. So we've now done everything it's prompt us to do. And you can see already we've got a much smaller, cleaner spectrum and spike there and it's telling us our amplitude is 0 0.02 inches per second. So we've made a drastic improvement. Almost 0 0.03 but 0 0.023 bouncing up to almost 0 0.03 inches per second is our amplitude now from 0.2 inches per over 0.2 inches per second 0.2512 exactly here as you see what we took originally so we're already to spec but it's asking us to hit the next prompt which is vibration with the correction weight which we did so it inputs the 0 0.0217 as you can see here and it's still continuing to tell me my heavy spot is at 328 degrees so below it under the trim weight it's saying well I'd like you to put 0 0.003 ounces which is below my scale capability unfortunately at 153 degrees so what I've done is I've taken a little piece of electric tape very light what I would guess that that light light weight would be and it's telling me to put it at 153 degrees so let's do that and we're gonna follow the prompts through again we're gonna find our zero and obviously 150 is between the 180 and 90 here I would say 150 is right about there pretty safely we're going to put that tape on there and we're going to run it up again. And as our reading settles in here, now I'd like you to see on the screen here, look at how small that one times running speed spike is and look at how low our number is. We're at a 0 .0069 and yet we're still getting a steady angle of 101. We've tested this balancing equipment against some of the best in, in the business, the best equipment, uh, over $30,000 to $40,000 equipment, and we can reach results far below the sensitivity. Uh, we've actually accomplished a 0 .0000 on a regular basis, where our last correction mark is simply a magic marker mark on this wheel that you see here today but I'm not going to go to that level 0 0.0059 anybody knows in the industry that's an exemplary result we don't need to go any further if I did want to go further but I want to show you this last prompt down I can hit the last prompt which is vibration with trim weight because it knows I put a trim weight there and it will give me another angle of 0 0.0059 is our amplitude now and it's going to tell me to put 0 0.0003 ounces which I don't know how you'd measure that little amount of weight at 294 degrees so that's when you're coming in to you know uh, maybe a small uh, piece of scotch tape or something that would weigh something so light to make that correction so we are uh, we're we're finished so we can hit the report button hit the report button and you can see it gives me my uh, rotor ID I can put in here that this is a test or whatever uh, asset number this might have 
Uh, it's giving me my balancing speed, my uh, balance tolerance, everything is in there. I can put notes in there and I can hit the picture, but I'm not going to do that simply because that will stop our display recorder from, but you can see this is where we started here in the red. This is where we ended up. Here's those numbers. Uh, we started at a 0.25 inches per second and we ended up at a 0 0.0059 which again is exemplary we can email that right from here it puts in an email format for me everything is lined up and ready to go all i have to do is hit the send button and it will go to the intended recipient so this is the short tutorial on balance pro if you have any questions please reach out at www.gtipredictive.com or you can reach us at 603-669-5993. We thank you for your time.